There's a new must-see fight on the boxing calendar, and it goes down August 6th. Showtime pay-per-view, New York's Madison Square Garden. And Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell of Morning Combat here to get you fired up when Jake Paul puts his 5-0 record on the line. But the first time against somebody who is just that, a professional fighter. And we got him right here. Let's bring him right in. Haseem Rahman Jr., the son of the former heavyweight champion, 12-1 and as a professional up to this point. But Haseem, welcome into Morning Combat we're fired up for this matchup because this looks a lot different on paper than what Tommy Fury, who was originally scheduled to, could potentially bring. Uh, for people that don't know, how big of an upgrade is this in terms of the danger of what Jake Paul's going to face on August 6th? Uh, you know, I, I honestly think I knocked Tommy Fury out. So uh, I think I knocked Jake Paul out, too. So that, that's just my opinion. Um Come August 6th, we get to see what's real. Uh, I don't think either one of those guys are on my level. Um, I'm, I'm, I got in this sport to compete for a world title. I don't think that, they're, that they did the same. So tell me, Haseem, imagine I was fighting Jake Paul and you were my coach and I'd never seen any footage on him. What would you tell me to be ready for? What would you tell me about my opponent? I would tell you uh, to, to, to definitely you're going to have to come in shape. And you're going to have to watch out for his right hand. Um, you definitely got to watch out for his right hand because it's a, it's a bomb. But uh, if you come in shape and you neutralize his right hand, you're going to have a great chance. Well, it's not just that Jake's fighting a, a you know real fighter for the first time, and, and no disrespect to the guys he's knocked out. You're absolutely a real fighter, a six foot three heavyweight, southpaw, 12 and 1, 31 years old. But part of this buildup does include this sort of bringing you down in weight. This will be a 200-pound bout. It's basically a cruiserweight bout. You fought at 224 this calendar year. How tough of a cut will this be for you to get down to 200 for this fight? I mean, I, I weighed in 224. So how, how crazy would it be if, if Shakur Stevenson was calling out Jamel Tarlow? Would that seem crazy to y'all? Yeah. Yes, it would. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, then. It, 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 it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, weight is weight. It's not like um, I wasn't in shape for my for my last fight. You, you can see from the weigh in, you can see from the fight um, what, what type of shape I was in. You don't see 130 pounders calling out people at 154 to come down to 130 without a catch weight or without a, a you know, that it just, it's ridiculous. But, um, it's, it's what I agreed to because I can't do it. And I know that they think that that's, what, that's what's going to win them the fight. And um, uh, I, I think they bit off a lot more than they could chew. It's, it's not going to be that. It's going to be a massacre. I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat up Jake Paul on August 6th. Well, let me just take one more question on the weight here. You fought as high as, I believe, 269 as a professional. You can correct me if I'm wrong. When was the last time no. you were in a position where you felt like you can make 200? That was a typo. That, 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 that fight was, over, uh, was in Mexico, and I think they wrote down my weight for him and his weight for me. Look at the fight. You could look at the fight. You could see that. He was 269. I think I was like 235 or 240 mm -hmm. or something like that. But uh, I've weighed as low as 211. In my career, I believe, and I've been as low as I think uh, 207 on, on a weigh-in day. So, uh, 200 pounds is not out of the realms for me. I'm going to make the weight. I'm, gonna, I'm already uh, ahead of schedule to, to make the weight. So, it, it's looking really good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very, very full of energy, full of, uh, full of excitement. I'm ready to go come August 6th. It's going to be trouble for Jacob. Last one for me on the weight. I promise we'll move on. But the last one for me is who is helping you make 200 pounds? Because it seems like from our vantage point that this is the kind of cut that a professional would need to assist you with both in the pre and then in the rehydration process as well. Absolutely. I do not know her last name, but her first name is Paulina. And I know she works with uh, Andre Ward and Terrence Crawford and a bunch of the USA boxing team uh, uh, athletes. Um, Huge thank you to Paulina. She is she is definitely making this an easy process, and uh, along with my dad and, and and the rest of my coaches that are making this process easy and bringing the weight off. 
and keeping me full of energy and able to do every workout at 100%. So that's giving me the confidence to know that when I go into when I go in there on fight night, I'll be able to give 100%. Well, look, if, if there's no physical things holding you back, this fight could change in what people think it's going to be the outcome on paper because you've got the experience advantage, you're a southpaw, you've got the size advantage. Uh, this is what you do. You're, it's in the lineage, so to speak. So when you look at this fight and you look at the potential opportunity for you, what can you do with this fight? What does this fight actually mean to you at this point in your career? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's a huge opportunity. It's the biggest opportunity I've ever been presented with. And um, this, this fight is just eerily reminds me of my father versus Lennox, where Lennox Lewis picked my father. And then he went and he was the underdog and he, he knocked him out. So, you know, I'm looking to follow on my father's footsteps. Like I've always said I have been. And I'm um, looking to go ahead and uh, uh, upset Jake Paul and knock him out. Um, and if I, I don't knock him out, I'm going to beat him up for eight rounds and, and be crowned victorious. So it, uh, it, it means a lot to have seen my father go through everything he went through and sacrifice everything he sacrificed in order for me to be, be able to go to private schools and never have to want for anything. Those are, those are things that I want for my kids. So uh, I'm going to put my best foot forward so my name can, can be remembered for, for exposing Jake Paul forever. You know, and speaking with your dad, after watching the press conference, I will say this. He seems like an honest guy. He seems like a very honest guy. So let me ask you the question about his honesty in this way. Once this fight got signed, once it was on, what has he been telling you is like the most important key? What are the, what's the biggest piece of advice he's given you about guiding this process the right way? The biggest thing, the biggest thing he tells me is that almost every day is just stay focused. As long as I stay focused, it's, it's, it, everything else can take care of itself. Stay focused. I keep giving him a hundred. I give him a hundred percent every day in the gym, and um, that's something that it took us a long time to do. Um, I wasn't giving him a hundred before. I wasn't giving him a hundred before consistently like this. I I have given him a hundred before, but not as consistent as as this has been. And um, not on this level. I'm pushing myself to the limit every single day. And I'm doing everything that they asked me to do. Uh, I haven't asked any questions. I haven't, I, I, I have given every single ounce of my energy to, to, to this victory. So I believe that me doing that is going to afford me a victory on August 6th. So as blunt as your dad's words were about you, and look, my dad, the same way. I mean, mm -hmm. he's very critical. He gets to the point. He knows how to press that button to get me going. Would you agree that, as you just sort of said about maybe not always giving 100%, that there's a there's a ceiling within you that you've never even come close to tapping into yet? Yes, absolutely. And that's what he said at the conference, um, you know, where he said that I've been underprepared for my fights like this. This fights that I've won by first round, a lot of fights that I've won by first round knockout, um, where I, I, I could have been in – better shape or I could have ended that fight uh, in even more emphatic fashion. Uh, with that being said, I think that, um, you know, having an honest person in your corner is the best thing because I know when it comes down to it, he's going to be honest. He's going to let me know what's going on. He's going to let me know what I need to do. And if I listen, I'll come out on top. Yeah, fair enough. So this fight goes down August 6th. Assuming everything goes the way that you and your team believe it will go, tell me what your boxing career is like in September. What does it look like to you? I want to. I want to fight big fights. I want to continue to fight big fights. Um, I'm looking to fight. You know, uh, on my mind right now, I'm, I'm only really looking at the champions. So whoever I have to fight to get in there with Oscar Rivas. Is, is that's the belt that I have on my mind. That's the belt that I want. I want the Bridger Eight World title. So, you know, whatever I have to do to fight Oscar Rivas, who fights a week after me and Jake um, for the Bridger Eight World title, uh, being if he wins, then, then that would be, that'll be my, my goal come September. Nothing's changed. Um, defeating Jake Paul just, just ups my, my popularity. It doesn't oh, the move me up in the ranking. For, I mean, the phone's gonna be a, the phone's gonna be a ringing if you get this victory over Jake Paul just for the exposure, the celebrity that comes with this. So why don't I close with this, Asim? And it's been great having you. A lot of the storyline tails into 
the sparring that you two did, which was early in Jake's transition. I think, you know, before, before and after, you can correct me, maybe his first and second pro fight right around that area. So things could be a lot different now in terms of the fighter you met. But what did you learn about him that gives you the confidence heading in August 6th? Um, I learned that he doesn't know, like, he, his, his his trainers, the people that are doing this for him, they don't tell him that they're asking people not to knock this guy out. He's, in his head, he's convinced that these sparring sessions are real fights because he doesn't have an amateur background. Um, so he, he doesn't have amateur fight experience. So when he gets in there with the pro, he's treating it like it's a real fight. And, you know, the pros such as myself and other people that have sparred him, we're being told, okay, don't don't turn southpaw, don't knock this guy out, don't piss him off, or else it's gonna be hard to get you paid. He's not gonna come off the money. Um, with that being said, that's a that's a super handicap to me, and for him to to have built this false bravado, this false confidence, is only gonna be a detriment to his health come August sixth. He's gonna be in trouble. I'm fired up. He got me fired the heck Can't up. Wait. Uh Hasim Rockman Jr., we wish you well. August 6th, Showtime pay-per-view. MSG, the Mecca. This is the real deal. This is the big time. So uh best of luck to you. We can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. God bless. And this fight right here is for all the Muslims in the world. Tech like Beard.